Okay, we are starting. Um, our webinar today is devoted to magnetic force microscopy. My name is uh, Sergei Demokratov. Uh, I have a rather broad experience in uh, magnetism, I include in magnetic force microscopy. And I will be talking today about basics and application of uh, magnetic force microscopy. Um, on this slide, you see some cartoons which demonstrate the, um, uh, the magnetic force microscopy. As you can see here, um, magnetic force microscopy is just a part, or, or it's just a, uh, um, uh, similar to atomic force microscopy. We have a cantilever and magnetic materials, and there is interaction between cantilever and materials due to magnetic dipole forces. And to do that, uh, the cantilever is usually covered by some magnetic materials, uh, which is uh, magnetized usually in vertical direction. And um, the cantilever is driven by some generator, so um, it is oscillating. And as you see here in, the, in this middle uh, cartoon, middle uh, graph, um, the, uh, there is a resonance curve for these oscillations, and if uh, the resonance, uh, if the driving force uh, it has the same frequency as the resonance frequency of the cantilever, the amplitude of the oscillation is, has its maximum, and what is more important, the phase between the oscillation of the cantilever and driving force has 90 degrees. So, um, if we have some interactions between, uh, current, uh, this is valid for without any interaction. Um, if we have interaction between um, a cantilever and um, a sample, for example, if we, in a sample there is a magnetic part, part particle which create dipole fields and they exert a force on the cantilever, the resonance frequency is changing. And depending on the sign of the forces, whether it's attractive or repulsing, uh, the resonance frequency can be lower on or high. Correspondingly, the changes of the phase, uh, are, um, the, the dependence of the phase on the uh, driven, uh, the pre uh, frequency of the dri driving force is changing, as it's shown in this cartoon by uh, s uh, blue, uh, uh, blue and red curves. If, however, the uh, mm, frequency of the driving force is constant, uh, one really sees that uh, interaction cause changes in the phase between the um, oscillations of cantilever and driving force. So, by measuring such, uh, such phase shift, one can, one can definitely measure the, uh, the forces uh, which act on uh, of the cantilever from the sample, magnetic forces. And what is important then, since for attractive, for example, in this particular case, for attractive interaction, the resonance frequency goes, uh, becomes uh, big. For attractive interaction, the resonance frequency bec uh, becomes low, and for repulsive interaction, it becomes higher. So, by changing the, um, by measuring the phase shift, positive or negative, we can uh, uh, easily distinguish between attractive and repulsive interaction. You can also see that the, 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 um, uh, some difficulties uh, or challenges of this, of this technique. Um, since the um, uh, magnetic probe has uh, itself magnetic moment and also create dipole fields, um, this uh, probe um, can um, disturb the magnetic structure of the sample under investigation. Um, and it causes even uh, cause remagnetization uh, uh, of the sample, and on the other hand, the sample itself can influence the magnetic structure of the probe and um, uh, even remagnetize the probe by the field. And what is also important uh, for, for our further discussion is that since the dipole fields are non-local, you this this technique is not uh, very uh, it is not only surface sensitive but it also has sensitivity for layers which are um, below the surface so you can really ima Im 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 uh, make an image of the layer or buried, uh, buried layers and 
if you make a, a, a magnetic flow from hydroscopy, you should adjust different several parameters. For example, you should uh, you can change the thickness of the um, magnetic um, cover layer. Uh, it's chemical. Um, it, it, it might be high magnetic uh, moment material or low magnetic material. And what is also important, you can also change the distance between the cantilever and the um, and the sample by uh, decreasing the um, the, the uh, distance between cantilever and the sample. You can increase uh, increase the interaction between sample and the probe, and in such a way increase the signal to ray snow show by uh, increasing the distance between cantilever and the sample. You can decrease uh, the uh, disturbance of the uh, cantilever of the probe on the sample, and vice versa, sample on the probe. So. Um, here we will uh, we will see several um, examples of magnetic force application. So on the left picture, on the left uh, image, you see a magnetic force uh, MFM image of a hard disk drive. Uh, usually, it's a standard um, image to to check functionality of uh, MFM microscope, um, and because um, Hard disk drive produce you well-defined domains. It means well-defined dipole fields to, to detect the material of the hard, uh, hard disk drive uh, is uh, magnetically hard, so it is um, difficult to change this this structure. So you cannot uh, think take care about the field of the probe. Um, but on the other hand. Um, so you can use uh, so you can use uh, coating with uh, with the materials with high moment like cobalt, um, and therefore you can um, create rather strong signal to ratio uh, signal to noise ratio. Uh, further pictures uh, shows you domain um, images of domains from um, um, soft garnet field, magnetically soft garnet field, and this to make uh, to to make such image it's more challenging because in this case you should take care that the uh, dipole fields of the probe do not disturb the domain structure of, of your garnet field. And um, uh, in this case you should use thin magnetic coating uh, or as you see here on the, on the right hand uh, magnetic domains in cobalt uh, uh, gold uh, multi rares which also can be disturbed by uh, a magnetic a magnetic field of the of the probe uh, they are they are imaged using a probe with low mag uh, with the coating with low magnetic moments like like uh, like cobalt chrome and cobalt um, copper um, these are rather nice picture but it's mainly here is uh, this this picture are mainly uh, qualitative so you can also make uh, quantitative um, measurements here. You see example of uh, quantitative uh, MFM images uh, performed on elliptical ferrum, uh, ferrum chrom chromium particles. So you see on the on the um, uh, upper row, you see measured uh, MFM imaging indicating that these particles can um, be in different magnetic states. Uh, on the middle row, you see uh, simulated images of the uh, dipole fields and correspondingly um, uh, MFM images, uh, implying the, that the, um, the, the particle has well-defined magnetic uh, distribution, which is shown on the bottom. And you see that um, the, the agreement between measured and simulated images is rather, is rather good. So you can really, um, using MFM, you can really uh, learn a lot about, um, about the uh, uh, magnetic state of a single particle. As um, quantitative information is concerned, um, to, um, you can also measure the, the dipole fields uh, quantitatively, but for that purpose you need well-defined 
well-defined uh, reference sample, for example, a re a sample which is shown here, where, where the magnetization is almost uniform. So, uh, and for this, per per for this sample, you definitely know the distribution of dipole fields. And by once measuring this, um, uh, this distribution, you can calibrate your probe, and after that, you can um, convert measured uh, phase shift on, on, on your probe into dipole fields and in such a way to make quantitative MFM. Our next example uh, demonstrates um, the sensitivity of MFM um, application for uh, different layers which are uh, uh, situated below the surface. Here you see example of a stack of uh, cobalt um, micro disk, nano disk. Uh, you have see you have you see here three cobalt disks separated by sil uh, sil silicon layers, and um, due to dipole interaction between these disks, different magnetic uh, uh, states are possible. And um, uh, for example, uh, you can have helical structure, and helical structure can be left or right. Um, and of course, the uh, helicity of the structure determined not by the magnetization of the upper layer by the, the magnetization of all three layers and the uh, MFM image which shown on the right side uh, shows you that different um, uh, uh, different uh, stacks with different helical structure can be detected which is mean which means that um, the uh, magnetization information about magnetization of the bottom layer which are below uh, um, on the knees of the surface are also um, can be detected by MFM application. Um, it is now a very hot topic to create well-defined magnetic states and which is called nano-engineered and you can produce um, a magnetic element using some lithography technique uh, for purpose to create well-defined magnetic states and um, MFM images can help you to, to detect and to, to control these magnetic states. Here you see uh, on this picture you see um, um, electron um, uh, microscopy image of ferromagnetic um, cobalt uh, structure. Here is a triangle and here is a cross-like structure and on the right, right images you have MFM in images. So by analyzing these images you can say that in one case a vortex structure or in another case anti-vortex structures is obtained and these structures were created by purpose and MFM images uh, just demonstrate these, these attempts were successful. It is also rather interesting to, um, to perform uh, uh, MFM uh, under different temperatures and in such a way you can um, investigate the magnetic phase transition. Here you see, you see uh, MFM images um, made on bulk uh, cobalt single crystal at different temperatures. And you see that uh, they, they, uh, on the uh, top uh, uh, row you see the uh, topography uh, and there is no changes in topography when you, uh, if you change the, the, uh, the temperature. But the ch changes of uh, magnetic uh, MFM images are, are dramatic. Um, and uh, by analyzing these, uh, these images one can conclude that uh, uh, magnetic crystalline inosotropy is changing um, while, while the sample is heated. So uh, from uniaxial to easy coin or easy plane uh, inosotropy um, is I change it and you can detect that using MFM. What is very important by MFM is application of uh, external magnetic field. Here you have an example of so-called artificial spin eyes which is a honeycomb structure of magnetic iron uh, microbars with dimension in micrometer or sub-micrometer uh, uh, regime. And without magnetic field, as you see uh, on, on this picture in the, in the middle of the screen, uh, these bars are, um, uh, are not ordered. By applying a rather small magnetic field here, you see that uh, the almost perfect ordering of this bar can be detected by using MFM and you can investigate also um, 
how this ordering happens. And uh, uh, another example of uh, uh, measurements of MFL measurements using uh, applied magnetic field is uh, is shown uh, on the bottom of the slide, where you see magnetic domain structure again in garnet films, which is rather soft magnetic um, materials, and you see that by applying rather small magnetic magnetic uh, field, you can dramatically change the structure of the domain from this rather nice or rather exotic domain structure to rather uh, simple uh, striped domain structure. And it is um, determined by the edges, it is, uh, these, these changes are caused by the application of the uh, magnetic field. The Horizontal magnetic field definitely breaks you the in-place symmetry of your sample if, if it's the symmetry exists. So um, if you are, uh, are implied vertical magnetic field, out of plane magnetic field, you can also change um, the magnetic structure of your sample without breaking the in-plane symmetry. As it is shown in these uh, images, uh, you see um, um, the domain, uh, domains in um, garnet film detected by MFM, uh, different uh, out-of-plane uh, magnetic fields. And you see that uh, application of uh, this uh, magnetic field doesn't break the symmetry. So you don't see a striped structure as you have, you have seen in the previous slide, just because the external magnetic field is, is vertical. So um, it, is, um, it is also uh, important to increase the, uh, the, the in some in some measurements it is important to increase the uh, signal to noise ratio and as you seen from the from the first cartoon uh, um, the signal uh, high signal can be obtained if your resonance curve is rather narrow because the uh, shift of the, uh, if it's narrow, so you can uh, detect it smaller shifts of the resonance frequency and therefore the in, in, in possibility to increase the quality factor of your cantilever are of great importance. And why, and one way to increase this quality factor is to use uh, vacuum measurements because the uh, quality factor is determined by the energy losses. Um, and one of the important factor of the energy losses for cantilever is just uh, uh, it's just viscous viscous losses um, in, in in the air. So by pumping air, uh, you can, as it's shown here in this in this slide on the left, by reducing the uh, the uh, pressure of air, air, you can increase the quality factor by a factor of ten or even or, or even higher. Um, and what is important that for increasing of this uh, of the quality factor, you don't need a very high vacuum. So you see, even uh, by 0.1 uh, millibar, tor, you have a, a saturation uh, of the quality factor. So you can reach this um, this high uh, quality factor using rather simple simple devices and pictures which is presented here in, uh, on the right side of the slide, demonstrate that, of, that uh, such increase of the quality factor is rather useful. So you see here um, a picture at air with rather poor uh, signal to noise ratio and after uh, the air was pumped out, the signal to noise ratio is increasing. You can observe uh, some structure which is, which, is in, uh, which is of interest. So. Um, Um, here is uh, you see a device uh, developed by MDT on the Integra platform, which allows you measurements at rather low uh, vacuum. Uh, but uh, since the the chamber is closed, you can also um, uh, use different gases uh, environment uh, for your measurements. For example, for biological or chemical application, online investigation of oxidation process, for example. Um, and it is a rather, rather simple um, system which allows you um, to do that in vacuum and increase the quality of it. However, if you wanted to, uh, to measure uh, at low temperatures, um, you necessarily need to have high vacuum 
because um, the main problem by measurements at low temperature is the ice, which which is growing on the inter on the, on your surface due to moisture of the air, and to uh, um, to remove this ice or to not to allow this ice to grow, you need to um, to pump your your system in in, in the high vacuum BG. So in 10 to minus 8 uh, door regime, and uh, for that you need another chamber, and it is as, 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 as you see here, and um, using this chamber one can uh, uh, perform uh, MFM or even or in general IFM measurements at low temperatures for, for many hours without growing an uh, uh, ice uh, uh, layer on your, on your surface. And um, you see uh, that <coughs> here an example of measurements at, at low temperatures um, and room temperatures, and you see that um, um, uh, that um, that changes of uh, of temperature, you uh, definitely increase the the, the uh, MFM contrast due to changes in your magnetic sample. Additional, of course, additional. Um, uh, uh, point here is that by, by low temperatures your cantilever becomes even have, have even better quality, um, and therefore it's also contribute to the uh, uh, signal to noise uh, to noise ratio in your measurements. One of the important uh, application on MFM devices is magnetic nanolithography. So, um, and, and as I said, that the uh, dipole fields of the magnetic, of the magnetic tip can disturb the magnetic structure in, in, uh, of, of the sample. In many applications, this is a bad thing, this is a disadvantage, but in some applications, this is an advantage. And uh, you can use this, uh, this technique, this device for, um, for magnetic lithography in, in such a way that, as we discussed it in, 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 in before, the dipole fields of the probe strongly depends on the distance between probe and the sample. So by reducing the distance between probe and sample, you can remagnetize uh, the, uh, the some uh, elements of the sample. Uh, and then by uh, increasing the distance between uh, probe, tip, or and sample, you can make uh, again uh, MFM images of the sample without uh, disturbing the structure. And in such a way, you can uh, control by using the same device. You can control whether nanolithography uh, was successful or not. And here you see example of this application. Here you have um, an array of cobalt platinum uh, disks. Um, uh, which is uh, rather important for application because, in fact, uh, recent, the recent development of magnetic storage is concentrated on so-called pattern media, where one bit will be stored in one uh, single um, storage element, um, and and it's a huge um, change to find technology to uh, address um, as H, uh, uh, one elements and to write magnetic inf uh, information in magnetic states of the, of the element. And such uh, approach using uh, MFM tips is rather successful. And you see on the, on, on the, here on this, on these pictures how um, without, um, without um, um, magnetic nanolithography all um, disks have the same magnetization up and just by uh, putting your tip on in the, in the near close to one or another elements you can, um, you can switch uh, uh, one or another elements and create su such a pat pattern and as again uh, this uh, this process this images has been obtained in two steps. First, um, under uh, small distance between um, probe and element, you make lithography, and by then increasing the distance between magnetic tip and the sample, you just check that lithography. You make MFM image and the check that lithography is successful. Another example here is uh, of such a lithography is array of uh, of uh, um, um, uh, elements which have, we have already seen in the, in the beginning, for example, 
problem dots. And you see, by using this this approach, you can either uh, magnetize a single element, for example, as it's shown here, that one element is magnetized, or a very large array of elements writing uh, information in one or another way. As I said, uh, that um, uh, application of, of magnetic fields uh, for MFM imaging is very important. As we uh, discussed, um, uh, um, micro um, ferromagnetic ferrom, uh, micro steps, um, it was it was possible to uh, to order them and magnetize using by rather small magnetic field. However, if you consider a, a molecular magnet or natural magnets where magnetism, magnetism is determined by uh, atomic, uh, atomic uh, um, moments, you need to apply rather strong magnetic field. And recently, um, I'm proud to say that I was, uh, was uh, um, included into the development of uh, NTMDT company, develop um, a, a per permanent magnet, which allows you to, uh, to uh, apply magnetic field up to one Tesla uh, demonstration or 0.1 Tesla already uh, ready product um, during during MFM imaging. The application of uh, um, uh, the problem of application of magnetic strong magnetic field during measurement uh, MFM uh, um, measurement is not so simple because usually strong magnetic field are um, uh, provided by electric magnet or uh, by permanent magnets in the shape of, uh, of the yoke uh, and um, where the, the small spacer, uh, uh, spacer between magnetic yoke uh, is, um, is de define you magnetic, uh, strong magnetic field. Uh, for MFM engine this approach is not unapplicable because you need, as it's shown in this, in this cartoon, you need the, uh, uh, the upper hemisphere for, for uh, MFM images. And the only uh, 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 possibility you have uh, to apply magnetic field is this uh, volume uh, just below your sample. And uh, we, we develop a um, um, permanent magnet which concentrates magnetic field and allows you, even in such unfortunate geometry, to apply strong magnetic field in, uh, to your sample. Um, uh, using by uh, using the uh, per permanent permanent magnets, you have a lot of advantages. First of all, you don't need uh, external cooling of the of electromagnet. This is usually uh, done for electric magnets, so there is no therm thermal gradient. Uh, there is no um, uh, external of a vibration. And this magnet is rather small, so as you can see, this is it's a uh, compatible with exi existing uh, integral IFM system, and you, as is shown in this uh, in this graph, um, that magnetic field, um, which uh, shown here, is the vertical component of the magnetic field as a function distance from the from the center of the magnet and elevation over the magnet, and you can see that the magnetic field is really concentrated in the center of the magnet. But um, uh, from the point of view of magnetic force microscopy, it's rather uniform because if you look on the scale here, these are millimeters. So the, the, the region of rather uniform magnetic field is several millimeters, uh, while the, usually the sample you are uh, investigating is maximum hundreds of micrometers. So from this point, point of view, the, uh, the, uh, the magnetic field is rather, um, is rather uniform. Um, but another point is that um, if you go out from the center, then, and as you see here, for example, the magnetic field uh, decreases uh, dramatically. And um, as we know from the Maxwell equation, if one component of the magnetic field changes, so it's also change the another component of the magnetic field should also change it. And as shown in the uh, uh, on the right graph, the in-plane component, uh, which is definitely zero in the center of your of the magnet, just, just due to symmetry reason, due to axial symmetry of the, of the arrangement, increase dramatically while you move out from the center. 
And in, in, at the distance of several millimeter, five or six millimeter, you have a very interesting situation where the uh, in-plane component uh, reach rather strong value, 0.6 uh, Tesla, while the out-of-play component goes to zero. So in, in, in this arrangement, you can uh, in the same in the same um, in the same system you can apply either uh, out of plane perpendicular or in plane um, magnetic strong magnetic field and these changes can be made just by by moving your sample within a couple of millimeters. Um, when you put your sample on the, on the in some well uh, in some position, you can also change very magnetic field by ch mechanical change uh, mechanical motion of some parts of the uh, of the uh, of the magnet. So you can uh, you can have a possibility of continuous changes of the magnetic field in given um, the interval changes. Okay. Uh, last but not least, uh, resolution. Um, as I said um, in the beginning, the resolution of magnetic force microscopy is much uh, is worse than atomic force microscopy, and it's, it has uh, um, obvious uh, reasons because instead of working with contact uh, atomic forces, here one works with um, non-localized dipole fields. Nevertheless, um, uh, using special high-resolution magnetic probes uh, with very high curvature. Uh, and with very strong, uh, very uh, non-uniform distribution of magnetic moments, you can reach rather good um, uh, resolution in, in, the, in the scale of 20 to 30 nanometers. And what is important, and this is, uh, and this is um, uh, usually um, important for probe uh, techniques, uh, these, um, these, um, these uh, uh, probes are rather stable. So you see here that uh, the test of uh, about 30 days and they are survive, they, are, they survive uh, after 30 days measurements and you see that this really gives you very good resolution. Okay, um, finally I'd like to pay your attention that the uh, NTM data company has two um, um, directions uh, or two families of the devices. Uh, one of the Integra platform, which um, gives you the highest uh, flexibility uh, to use um, this for not only MFM measurements, but many other applications of uh, similar to IFM, which I'm, I'm not going to speak today about. Um, uh, and another platform is Solver, which is rather simple, and, uh, and this is really devices for beginners, so um, even um, rather un, un experienced uh, user can use this device without uh, really uh, big, uh, big problems. Um, now I, I'm at the end of my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have questions, you can write them on the chart or you can write um, uh, uh, the mail on this address and we will uh, answer your question um, later. Thank you very much. Well, I have some questions here. Uh, um, can MFM measure thin film coating? Well, definitely yes. Um, as, I, as I said, that the, um, the sensitivity of, 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 your, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the technique depends on many factors. But in general, yes, uh, is you, uh, for example, some examples I have shown you uh, were samples with uh, several nanometers of, uh, of magnetic elements, so the sensitivity is definitely enough to, uh, to measure very few monolayers of, of magnetic materials. Of course, it depends on the uh, quality of magnetic materials, quality of the interface. It's rather, it's rather, it's, it's rather specific uh, question, but in general the answer is yes.
Well, there is a question about um, different domain structures in uh, external uh, external fields where the, um, the particular how the why the um, particular domain um, uh, structure are uh, influenced by a particular field. Uh, a particular field with a particular direction. I don't want to go into details here because, you know, the domain structure in garnet films, especially in thick garnet, uh, garnet films, is rather, is rather complex. Uh, therefore, I cannot answer uh, this question in a few minutes I have now. But uh, the, the idea of showing you these images was to demonstrate that magnetic field in plane and out magnetic field is um, uh, um, is um, uh, can be can be done. Again, um, what is the range of the thickness? Of the I was asked what is the range of the coating thickness that MFN can measure. Well, as I said, um, it depends. It's very it's it's very difficult to answer because it depends on um, on on the on the materials for example if you if you uh, investigate materials with high magnetic moment for example um, iron or copper um, then rather thin magnetic films of this material uh, domain structure uh, can be measured as you see one of the of the images I have shown you were the cobalt are uh, gold multi rays where the cobalt uh, layer were, uh, were rather thin, sub one, one two nanometers. From the uh, upper side, how thick can be uh, can be uh, um, your layer? It's also depend on the domain structure because, of course, if you if you have domain structure of of hundred nanometers, they have, uh, the dipole fields of this hundred of the domain structure also reducing in the vertical direction on the scale of hundred nanometers. Therefore, we cannot measure the um, the layers uh, uh, thicker than this hundred nanometers. However, if your lateral structure uh, has a scale of many micrometers, uh, therefore the, the the decreasing of the dipole fields of this structure is not so so strong in vertical direction. So you can probe um, the layers with several micrometer thick. So it is it depends um, um, and it depends on the on your uh, on your material. Uh, I have also a question: How the surface roughness uh, of the sample affect the measurements? Well. Again, in the in the linear approximation, it doesn't affect the measurements because the surface roughness, um, uh, because uh, the mm, uh, the cantilever is uh, has a, such a distance uh, to the samples that uh, um, atomic forces are negligible in this case. So the using advantage that the uh, dipole fields are long range fields, you can neglect. Uh, reasonable roughness and get rather good, uh, um, uh, rather good um, uh, MFM images. Even your sample is rather rough. However, of course, if your sample is extremely rough, if your roughness uh, scale is uh, above 100, my, 100 nanometers, then you, of course, MFM images uh, technique has also problems. So um, I see no questions more. So in, on this point, uh, we close this webinar. Thank you very much.